And now back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. So let me share with you folks a little something about Joey Chitwood. He serves as president of the International Speedway Corporation's flagship motorsports facility, the Daytona International Speedway. And as president, he oversees all the Speedway activities, including the event, entertainment, fun, and fan amenities and ticket sales. He assumed this role in 2010, and Daytona International Speedway has never been the same. Uh, Mr. Chitwood sits on the board trustees of the Motor Sports Hall of Fame of America. He also serves on the boards of the Daytona Beach Com- Chamber of Commerce and the Central Florida Partnership. He's a member of the Advisory Committee for the Sports Executive Leadership Conference. He was previously a member of the Indianapolis 2012 Super Bowl Bid Committee and the 500 Festival Board of Directors and was an adjunct professor at Marion College in Indianapolis. Contrary to popular belief, he is not the brother of Daytona Beach Police Chief Mike Chitwood. I want to welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic, Joey Chitwood III. Joey, glad to have you back in the house. Oh, thank you so much. I get a little tired. You reading that? I can't believe I do all that stuff and trying to build a racetrack at the same time. But uh, things are good right now. We are weeks away, obviously, from our big Daytona 500 and just trying to put the finishing touches on the speedway. It's crazy that we're getting ready to start off the new year already. I understand uh, from uh, from the circuit that uh, Lisa France Kennedy's uh, made the statement that Daytona Rising and folks Daytona Rising is the growth effort and the renovation of the Speedway isn't for us it's for the fans so Joey give us the elevator the 30,000 foot view of what we're expected to see when we come to Daytona this year well you're going to see a complete transformation of a Speedway into a motorsports stadium, the first and only of its kind. We've spent $400 million, the largest investment in our company's history in anything, to really change the fan experience. So whether it's concourses that stretch nine-tenths of a mile long, 40 escalators, 17 elevators, 1,400 TV screens, triple the concessions, double the restrooms, all 101,000 brand new seats, 20 and 21 inches with chair backs, armrests, and cup holders, phenomenal sight lines, Wi Fi in all the concourses. We think we've taken the Daytona International Speedway into the now and the future, and we're excited because when I think when our fans show up, they're going to experience a property they've never experienced before. It's going to make their enjoyment of the Daytona 500 second to none. And even when I walk around after two and a half years of seeing this project every day, I'm still amazed at what we're able to accomplish. It's just been phenomenal to do something this special. And during this time of renovation, weren't you also carrying on business as usual? We were. We never postponed any events or any races. And after the fact, saying to myself, maybe we should have. It was a challenge running a prop, running the property and building the property at the same time. But we kept running our Daytona 500s and our Rolex 24s and our Coke Zeros. And it was unique. A fan saw a property truly under construction. But I think the payoff is coming in the next two weeks. Uh, we had a Rolex 24 a couple weeks ago. And I think fans just were blown away at the changes and how great the property is. But when we're at max capacity for the Daytona 500, I think our fans are really going to enjoy it. And when you think about it, you know, Big Bill did something unique and no one had ever thought about it. He built this speedway, moving racing from the beaches to the high banks. And 50 years later, we're really walking in his footsteps and doing something that no one else has ever done, creating the first and only motorsports stadium. And we see stadiums being built left and right in the football world, new arenas in basketball, new stadiums in baseball. But really, from a motorsports perspective, this is the first time to do something this unique, which is to reimagine this icon. So I like the fact that our team, the Daytona team, was front and center, right in the middle of it all. And uh, although I will tell you, I'll be happy when February 26th rolls around. <laughs> be nice to catch our breath for a little bit. Yeah, that, yeah and then go, get ready for next year, uh, or, or at least get ready for Coke Zero, which will be coming along in, in July. A, a quick question about the overview. When you're thinking about spending, or you and the board of directors and the team there, $400 million on an existing facility, Facility that was not shabby in, in and of itself. I've been there a dozen times. Uh, and versus building another track somewhere, how do you make that decision to invest? I mean, that that's a huge, not only investment, but there's a lot of faith underlying there as well. 
You know, from day one, we had the full commitment of the senior management team and the France family. When we walk them through to understand really the value that Daytona represents for our corporation and really for the industry as a whole and seeing where we were and after 50 years what we needed to accomplish, there wasn't a doubt that we were going to make sure Daytona continues to be that flagship brand. And that $400 million will cement that status moving forward. But I will tell you, from day one, no one ever faltered. They all realized we're here because Daytona has led the way. We're going to make sure that Daytona continues to lead the way. And yes, there's stressful times. There's uh, not much sleep when you're dealing with that kind of money and that kind of construction. But the executive support was second to none. And Jim France, from day one, was so excited about our plan. And I'll tell you what, he's been so supportive. We actually had him install the final seat of the project. So think about that. His dad built the property in the first place, and Jim came in to put that last seat in on that final uh, 101000 So pretty excited that the family continues that tradition. Yeah, now you're tugging at my heartstrings. One, one question. I, I understand that because of the length of the stands and the curvature of the earth, when they designed the steel, they had to compensate some seven inches for the curvature of the earth. Is that correct? That is correct. You know, these concourses stretch nine-tenths of a mile long. And you think about these other stadiums that are built, you know, football, baseball, basketball, they're small. I mean, we can fit football stadiums inside uh, the Daytona International Speedway, 15 of them. And so this grandstand is so long, and it's a concourse that is contiguous with concrete, so they had to make sure they get that level right, and it's amazing. It's truly a modern marvel when you think about it. 31 million pounds of steel. Uh, we think that rests on the shoulders of legends, you know, all the, uh, the heroes of our sport here, but 31 million pounds of steel, nine-tenths of a mile long. Again, this is why it took two and a half years. It is truly tremendous, and it's really breathtaking when you think about it in terms of our marquee sign and what you see. I mean, if you're on the east coast of Florida, I think you can see the Daytona International Speedway. Well, certainly Daytona rising uh, will rise that complete area ahead. So now it appears that the state of Florida, in including Daytona Beach and Daytona International National Speedway and Disney. Uh, here we grow again. So we will be the destination state of the nation, no doubt about it. And especially when you look at the cold weather and you look at the racing, and you look at all the attributes that you bring and your your team has brought. I, I want to touch on one little technical term, solar panels. Give us an overview of why and what they're used for. Well, for us, we have a great relationship with Florida Power and Light. They're actually a partner of ours for our truck race. Well, they've also actually installed solar panels on the property in three different locations. One is our solar pavilion, which is outside the front stretch. It's on our midway area, so fans actually can use it as a gathering area, a shade structure. We also have some canopies inside in the fan zone in terms of solar panel install. And then in our lot 10, which is south of the track, a third uh, area that we've installed. So it'll make us, I think, the fourth or fifth largest solar panel install at a sports facility in the southeast and just another way to give back to the community that uh, power that we generate goes back into the grid for this community so it's just another chance to kind of do the right thing as we manage and with a great partnership like FPL who'd ever think we'd have solar panels at the Daytona International Speedway uh, I'm sure I'm sure uh, Bill France would not have uh, not imagined that we talked about it nine tenths of a mile long how high are, uh, are the seats so we're about 180 feet uh, tall. It's the maximum allowed because of our location next to the airport. And I have to tell you, the sight lines at, at that level are phenomenal. You can see all the way to New Smyrna Beach. It, it's ridiculous how great it is. You can see every inch of not just the oval, but the road course as well. We had a ton of fans sitting in the turn one area of the new stadium to watch the Rolex 24. And, and we never really get fans to sit outside the track for that event. So it's already nice to see it's resonating even with our road course fans. Uh, again, best sight lines in the house, top row, and this new top row is phenomenal. One final question before I let you go. Uh, if I want to go up or if someone likes to go up real high, that, that appears to be on stadiums. And you mentioned stadiums. There are ramps and ramps and ramps and steps and steps. How do we get there? You would take three sets of escalators to get to level four, and if you had the top row, you'd only walk 20 more rows up to the top. But you can get there basically 80% of the way, 90% of the way, by taking three sets of escalators, and uh, I think that's going to make our fans um, very happy in terms of their moving around the property. I think your fans are going to come in to watch the track and to, and to enjoy the facility. And, of course, it's not bad to have a race or two there as well. Joey Chitwood III, president of the Daytona National Speedway. Joey, thanks for joining us on Bobby Likens Car Clinic. 
Absolutely. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, there you It just doesn't get any better than that, folks. There you have it. When I come back, I'll take your call to 888-CAR-CLINIC. <laughs> 